So let's work a little bit with spline. So now we're starting to dig a little bit more in the interface now that we know how to move and do some of the basic uh, things here. So what we want to do is we want to use a spline. And remember, I refer to this like the pin on Illustrator uh, here. That's what a spline sort of is. It's just an outline. And we have a bunch of different ones. Now we do have the spline pin, which we will use a little later where we can draw our own spines. But we also are provided a bunch of different ones here. But the one that I want to get is text. And if you're not, remember, if you just click and hold, anything that has an arrow, that means it has a bunch of other things with it. So what I want to do is just let go on text. And you can see that text pops in my scene. Now I am going to hold three so I can just click and drag and rotate around. And I'm going to hold one, and click and drag to kind of get in here. And then you can hold two to zoom in and out. All right. So we have text here. And once we've done that, now we notice that it's not 3D. That's fine. But we have a bunch of different options here. And what I can do, and if you're not seeing that, just make sure that you click on text. Whenever you want the attributes for what you're trying to manipulate to show up, you can see if I click off, nothing's there. But once I click on text, it now pops up here. And I have an option. It says text. Let me go in and change this. So I'll say hello. All right. Just type that in. And once I click off, we can see that that updates. And I can also click on my object in my scene here, my perspective view, and I can get that to pop up. And we have options. We got font. We can change what type of font. For this one, it's just regular. But I also have height. So if I want to make this a little bit bigger or smaller, I have horizontal spacing, which is almost kind of like kerning here almost. Then you have vertical spacing, and I don't have these stacked. I don't have like two on top of one another, so I'm not really going to get anything out of that. Uh, so that's fine. So we'll leave that alone. But what the main thing that we want to do is we want to actually change this object, and we want to make this 3D. Now, if you are in the previous version that's on the lab computers, and if you want this version, you can download it. I'll end up showing you how to do it. Nothing's really changed besides the color and, you know, a little bit with um, the toolbar here where they add extra things uh, as far as the, pretty much it's the same things. It's just giving it a different, uh, giving it a space on the toolbar. But what we want to do is this is called an extrude. Whenever you're taking a spline like this, lines, so to speak, you're going to end up wanting to make them extrude or be 3D. Now, if you're in the previous version, extrude will be found on this icon. All right. On this version, it's not found on this. It's found on a different one. Our generator objects are found here. So if I click and hold, you'll see extrude. So if you're on the previous version, go ahead and click on that and you should see extrude. But on this version, I'm going to go in and hit extrude here and I'm going to let go. And we can see now that we have an extrude in our scene. It's here. All right. Now, the thing about extrude is still not 3D. Why? Because we have to do the parent system. So whenever you're working with a generator object, which are these extrude, lay, loft, and sweep, what we end up having to do is make the text or the spline the child of the extrude. So in order to do that, you're just going to click and hold and drag up until you get an arrow that points down. And once that arrow points down, just let go. And once I let go, boom, you can see that my extrude has now been, it's now 3D and it's taking effect here. 
So let's see what settings we actually have in Extrude that we can manipulate. So in order to do that, just click on the Extrude yourself. So if I click on Extrude, boom, click there. Let's take a look at what we actually have here. So I have this object here. And look at what happens when I mess with the offset. Now, on the previous version, you probably don't have offset. You have this X, Y, and Z. And what you're going to want to do is um, manipulate the number on the Z axis. By default, it's set to 20. So look for something that's set to 20 and then bump that number up and you can do that. And look and see what I can do. I can start to make this bigger or smaller. And in the next video, what we're going to end up doing is I'm going to show you that anything that has these dots, we can end up, um, we can end up animating, which is really, really cool. All right. So that's one of the things that we'll do. And we'll, we're going to work with caps and all that cool stuff once we start getting to that. But we just want a basic default. So this is how you can create 3D text from anything and the great thing is we can take things from Illustrator and bring those in to Cinema 4D also.